Greetings from Mars. It's January 1, 2015, and this is the first Mars weather report last week on Mars. Here we will analyze the past week of weather as recorded from orbit from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and the data from the MAVEN mission as it becomes available. MAVEN entered orbit on December 8, 2014, and is now fully into its science phase at Mars. The Solar Energetic Particle Instrument has already observed significant solar activity both in the form of flares and coronal mass ejections from the Sun to Mars. MAVEN also generated a map of Mars's ozone layer from the lower atmosphere and has now provided a view of the escaping atmosphere of Mars showing the loss of atomic oxygen, atomic carbon, and atomic hydrogen. In fact, the atmospheric pressure on Mars is so low, any water that percolates up to the surface turns to vapor and is rapidly blown away into space by the solar wind. With all this loss of atmosphere, we should start rethinking the idea of terraforming Mars. Not likely. Mars has an atmospheric density of 1% of the Earth and has no general geomagnetic field. Earth has a field that extends 10 Earth radii in the direction of the Sun and provides an ample bow shock and general field region that protects life here from all but the worst solar storms. The Mars Express mission by ESA revealed that Mars only has bubbles of magnetic fields dotting the surface and provides a vastly different interaction with the solar wind and mass ejections that has made us rethink the locations of landing and habitation sites on the Martian surface. But let's have a look at last week's weather as seen from orbit from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. Last week on Mars, there was no increase in solar wind speed and there has been no coronal mass ejections that have reached the Martian environment for over a month. When we see them on Lasco, we will start following their progression out to Mars. Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter recorded common characteristics for this time of the Martian year. The large dust cloud over Iona and Serenium, generated from the local storms along the seasonal south polar cap, continued to spread westward early in the week before dissipating by week's end. Short-lived localized dust storms were observed in Chrysi, Solace, Serenium, Samaria, Asidius, and the Philegra Montes. High-altitude clouds occurred frequently near Eos, Chasm, and Valmarineris, and northeast of Hellas. Water ice clouds associated with the North Polar Hood continued to be the predominant weather feature over the northern plains, with an occasional Lee Wave cloud, known for the ripple-like appearance, were observed on the eastern side of topographic highs, craters, and ridges. The southern extent of the polar hood stretched over Acidalia, Deuteronius, and Utopia. Afternoon conditions in Valmarineris were hazy. Both rovers Curiosity and Gale Crater and Opportunity on Meridiani Planum experienced storm-free afternoon skies throughout the week. The bizarre Martian magnetic field densities to the west of the Tharsis region provided some protection from the ongoing solar wind streams that reached the Mars orbit and are evidently affecting the unprotected surface regions with greater severity than the magnetically protected region. Seen here from the ESA Mars Express mission, the bizarre auroral display was imaged once the spacecraft entered orbit and revealed the field regions in the area southwest of the Tharsis shield region. As previously discussed, these bubbles of magnetic fields may be the only possible locations offering protection from solar radiation from manned missions to the Red Planet. They apparently moderate weather as well. The field directions, nanotesla intensity, and regions have been well mapped at this point as seen in this projection. The strongest is about minus 60 degrees south latitude and 180 degrees east longitude seen here in the magnetometer map southwest of the Tharsis region about midpoint between the Hellas region and the Argyle quadrangle. The nanotesla strength field direction map shows the strongest magnetic field strength is centered at minus 45 south latitude, 180 east longitude. This is a likely site for the highest level of long-term habitation protection on Mars. Unfortunately, none of the American rovers currently on the surface are in this area and cannot directly monitor radiation effect comparisons. On the LASCO video over the time period, we see no coronal mass ejections as the sun is pretty quiet, but we can also watch the ISWA record of the inner planet in a little spiral showing directed energy as a strong flow increasing intensity of solar wind. Mars has a 95% carbon dioxide atmosphere and only reaches 70 degrees Fahrenheit at the equator in the middle of the summer, so atmospheric carbon has little, if anything, to do with atmospheric heating. On Earth, heating occurs by solar input, then carbon increases. If it was the other way around, the global warming gang would have an argument. They don't. Just like on Ben Davidson's Suspicious Observer site, it's the sun affecting planetary atmosphere, not carbon. There is no petrochemical industry on Mars, and the Martians aren't driving cars and operating coal-fired plants. And Mars is in a deep freeze most of the time. Pollution is the problem on Earth, not carbon, and we agree with Ben. It's the same on Mars as on Earth. Only the sun can significantly change a planetary's atmospheric temperature. So here are some shots of the rovers operating on the surface to close. It's the 3,191st day of the mission since orbital insertion of the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. It's winter in the Northern Hemisphere and solar noon at Mount Olympus. See you next week with another Mars weather report from the ongoing data stream from orbit. 
We will be adding the Maven data as it becomes publicly available. But in the meantime, keep looking up and out there.